Have you ever wondered how you can build unshakable, unbreakable, sustainable business? And I submit to you that if you want to build a sustainable and breakable business, you better find your inner calling, what you're called to do. And I submit to you, and I deeply believe so, it's impossible to do it alone. And I'm not talking about just without a mentor or without advisor or without community. It is impossible to build your business without God, without spirituality. Maybe there are other people, maybe there are other entrepreneurs who do it by themselves, who don't have spiritual component. I don't know how they do it. This is not my story. And today I would like to talk to you about how to build spirit-led business and how to trust God and bring more spirituality, more intuition, more manifestation, more miracles into your business. And also this topic, this is something, listen, this is something that I'm not fully comfortable with with because I normally don't talk spirituality. I normally don't talk about religion, even though the entire my entire life was influenced by religion, by influenced by spirituality. My first career as a sign language interpreter was influenced by my religion. I was born in Moscow, Russia. Well, in like back then it was Soviet Union. I'm showing my age, I know. Um, I was born right before the Soviet Union union uh collapsed this and episode is sponsored by my private business mentorship program heart and profit mentorship program uh to find out more uh go to the description or show notes for this episode find the link to schedule a call fill out the form and send me a dm so i can tell you more about the program or just send me a dm on linkedin or instagram and let's chat okay back to the show and that was a very interesting um, period religion wise because in Soviet Union there was no religion officially the church was banned there was like atheism right you 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 couldn't be a successful person have career have a job have res, rep, have a good reputation and go to church I mean you could go to church and it would be reported and it would like it would cause significant um uh, backlash on your professional life and on your reputation that was not okay but i was born in a period when it like soviet union collapsed the whole country literally immigrated in a way mentally to another like to another mindset and the floodgates were open a lot of spiritual um leaders a lot of uh spiritual influence um just flooded into the country and when I was thirteen, I um, I made a shift in uh, in my re- in my religion in my official religion. I went from Russian Orthodox Church, where I was officially baptized, to Baptist Church. And since then, since I was like what twelve, thirteen, my life has never been the same. And relationship with the Creator, relationship with God. Because I can't explain it as a miracle. Because when I was in church, like literally the heaven was open. I saw God. I felt God deep into my heart, deep into my soul. And since then, my life was instructed and guided by the Spirit. Starting with my first career, sign language interpreter. Following by my second career, clinical psychologist. And then dr- driving back home with my business as a coach, like creating, closing wealth gap, creating, like building the kingdom. And this is what I would like to talk about. So I think there is a lot of misconception about spirituality and wealth and running a business. And one, one, one of the biggest misconceptions that I want to break uh, down for you is that uh, if you want to build successful business, it's really important to find your alignment and your assignment. How do you find your alignment and your assignment? What you are meant to do? Because when we're building our businesses, we often look at other people like, oh, like she's a business coach. I should be a business coach. Oh, like uh, he is um, 
uh, he is running a tech business and uh, like I should run a tech business. Oh, he's like uh, she's doing something else. I should be doing something else. But here's the thing. Finding your alignment, finding your assignment, finding your unique ability in like this is this this is the first foundation, and this is the like and and, and I'm gonna tell you how to find your assignment. First of all, what are you drawn intuitively? What do you really like to do? What do you really love? Like I mean, really, really love. What what could you do? Every day, even if you wouldn't get paid for this craving. For me, it was and it was and it is coaching and mentorship, because when I was sign language interpreter, I was teaching or mentoring somebody how to be a sign language interpreter, teaching. Mentoring, coaching—it was a big part of it. Nobody paid me money for being taught and coach how to do sign, like how to, uh, how how to learn sign language. I was doing it for free. Well, at some point, I was lending clients as a freelancer, and either like to teach them sign language or uh, to do sign language interpreting. So, but I was doing it for free. Consulting and counseling, right? My clients who hired me, like I was like, yes, they paid me for like one particular line of service, but I was consulting and counseling and guiding and coaching, and I was do like I I did not charge for it. like I I had no idea that I could charge for it. And the second thing. Like that, like this is where this is where your assignment happens. Your your desire to do something, teach, I don't know, bake cookies, um, minister, preach. Like what else can you do? Uh, do videos and your unique abilities. Because listen, I could want to teach, but I could have sucked at it. But this is alignment. What is my unique ability? Writing code is not my unique ability. I do it well. I understand technology. It's a lot of fun. I enjoy it, but it's not my. I'm not the best developer out there. But when it comes to teaching, when it comes to coaching, when it comes to consulting and mentorship, I'm doing. I'm doing a really darn good job. This is where alignment happens, and this is where your assignment happens. And I think it is important to trust, to trust the Holy Spirit, to trust your intuition, to hear that voice of God. And you have your unique abilities. You have your unique. You have your unwavering, unquenchable desire to do something, even if you are not getting paid for it. For me, it's coaching. For me, it's counseling. For me, it's help helping people to be better. Helping people to be better. Helping people to be great. Taking them from A to Z. I don't care what it is. It could be mental health. It could be wealth. It can be building a business. It can be building a career. It can be anything. Like literally, I can coach you to. I can coach you to do anything. I will find your unique ability. I will find your blind spots. I will I will find what is not working for you, and I will make it work for you. And I'm good at it. I'm good with working with fears. I will. I'm good with working with limiting beliefs. I'm good with strategizing. Like that's a unique ability. What is your unique ability? And what is your desire to do? Building wealth is not. Is not copying others. Listen, you can emulate somebody else's behavior. You can emulate marketing. You can emulate behavior. You can emulate the business model, but you cannot emulate their success if it's not your assignment. If it is not your unique ability. If it's not what you're called to do. At some point, you will resent your business because sometimes. 
sometimes we get in this trap where we do our business because we believe like, well, it must be profitable. Listen, my first offer was career coaching offer for software engineers. And I only was doing that because I thought, well, this is something like I'm, I'm excellent at it. Like, I was working for nine years to be a software engineer. I learned my, I taught myself how to code. So do I want to teach other people how to code? Not really, but what, like, I want to, I want to do something like coaching or counseling or preferably combination of both. What can I do right now? Well, I can help people to get back to like to work with layoffs, with tech and like being in really, really tough like situation. I can help people to get to get back to jobs. And I did. But the thing is, well, the thing was, that was like, that was my assumption what would be profitable. It was like, yes, it was my unique ability and my excellent and and what I was like good at like technical skills but also I was I was disregarding my pure desire and my pure desire when when I started like when when I had my business idea I had this pure desire I want people to be better I want people to be great no matter what they do career business job technical skills. I just want people to be better. But this is not how we build businesses, okay? This is not really how we build businesses. We need a crystal clear program promise. We need like we, we, we need to package it a little bit better, right? And um, it's okay to be multi-passionate. But at some point, if you want to build a million dollar business, if you want to build a successful business, you need to, like, you need focus. So, I start I started looking for that focus and I had burning desire when I started my business like for real for real I started my business I hired a mentor and I like I was praying and I had this burning unstoppable desire to help people to make more money and what was really interesting my first, my, the vast majority of my clients were and are from black and Latino communities. The same like that follows my immigration journey. When I moved to the United States, the first community that welcomed me as an equal human being was black community. My first mentors in business were black women. I had other mentors to be fair, but my best mentors who helped me, who shaped me, who helped me to really get in the weeds of business, helped me with my messaging, helped me with um, my confidence were black mentors, were, were black women. That like, that, that, that is the story. How how you align your unique ability and, and, and calling. Also, the money is spiritual. The money also is spiritual. This is how I can prove that money is spiritual. First of all, money can be omnipresent. Money can be in your bank account. Money can be like as a cash. And money can be on your, like, in a digital form. In one of the other forms, money can be like in your in your bank account as a like like digitally, physically, and virtually. That's omnipresence. And also, money is a manifestation of wealth. And what is wealth? What is wealth? Wealth is your ability to create value for other people. And. Uh, God, oh, God often bless their servants like kings um, and prophets with wealth and with riches. For example, Abraham was very rich. King David, King Solomon, 
And by the way, they were like, again, we, we often as spiritual people, as Christians, we often say, well, money is a social, is a source of all, all evil. We shouldn't seek money. We should seek how to serve people. But I submit to you, money is the source of all evil when we use people to make money and serve and we start serving money we start depend we, we we start being dependent on money and controlled by the money versus when we're using money to serve and bless other people to create equality to create equity to cr to create ministries i don't know about you i want like i want to support my spiritual community i want to support my church i want to support my spiritual family and like and this is essential and also when it comes to your business when it comes to entrepreneurship it is essential to answer your line your that alignment your your spiritual alignment because god's will be done his will be done the question is will his Will his will be done through you? And sometimes we question our assignment because our business journey is rather tough. When it gets tough in our business journey, because listen, I want to break, I want to shatter the myth that building a coaching business is easy and simple. You just like, you just create your lead magnet, you just create your um, social media posts, you increase your following, boom, you have a um, seven-figure business. This is not how entrepreneurship works, I'm sorry. This is not how it works. So when it comes to your assignment, you have to answer the call, but your client has to answer the call too. Your client who is praying for a mentor, who is praying for a breakthrough. God, help me with my business. Show me the way. Show me the next step. Like, here's a mentor. God will never teach you how to build a business. God will give you the insights, the knowledges, the guidance. But God will also give you people to lead you. Elisha, Elisha needed Elijah, right? Great teachers needed teachers. Great leaders needed leaders. And this is like, this is essential to understand that yes, you answer your calling. And when you are frustrated, you're like, God, you call me to build a business and right now I'm here almost running out of money. Like, is it, is it what you want, God? No, because you answered your call because you said, yes, your will be done. God, not my will, but yours will be done. And does it mean that your prospective clients did the same thing? And sometimes it takes a little bit of time to find the alignment. You answer the call. You've done your part. You follow God's will. But other people who align with you, like who God sent you to, they have to answer the call too. Listen, when Moses was sent to the people of Israel, did they answer the call immediately? So like, this is it. Yep, let's go. No, <laughs> no. Listen, that was hard for him. It was his calling. It was his assignment. But that was, that was hard. Leading people, answering your call, answering your ministry. This is, a, this, this is a hard call. This is a hard calling. Success is not easy. Success is not overnight miracle. And when though it can be. So this is what I want you to leave with. Your business should like when you when you align your business and your calling 
and your assignment, and you start building God's kingdom on earth, then you will be fulfilled. Then you will see fulfillment, and you will get financial blessings. You will your your spiritual blessing will manifest in physical blessing. Whatever it means for you. Whatever it means for you, God will never forget you or forsake you or leave you. I like I truly believe so. I truly, truly believe so. Follow your assignment. Follow your calling. And listen, if you're looking for a mentor who will pray with you, who will give you the strategy. And I listen, I personally pray for every single client that I'm working with, for every single prospect. Before you get on the consultation call with me, I see your name, I will, I will pray for you, for real, for real. Like for, real, like, for real, for real. If you're looking for a mentor who will support you, pray for you, and give you a strategy with what, how to elevate your messaging, how to increase your sales, how to grow your business in an ethical way, grab the link in the show notes, grab the link in the description the, uh, for this video and book a call with me or send me a DM on LinkedIn or Instagram and let's have a conversation. Well, this is all of what I have for you today, today, tonight. Well, this is all for I have for you today. Listen, that was hell uncomfortable. I don't know if you felt it. I felt it. <laughs> that was hell uncomfortable. All right. Listen. Uh, next uh, episode, we're going to talk about money mindset. So I, I hope it will be a little bit easier episode. All right. Later.